Right, good afternoon everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Starting work on the Skoda today, if you haven't watched the first video on this car, I recommend going and watch that. I gave you a whole walk around of this thing, showed you all around it. I talked you through the problems and what was wrong with it, and today we are going to start on the biggest problem of all, and that is the gearbox noise. Now I read through the comments on the last video, and a bunch of you were in agreement with me that the input shaft bearings are naff on this thing. Some people were saying that it could be the throwout bearing for the uh, clutch, some people were also saying that it's a dual mass flywheel, although I I don't believe that this car has a dual mass flywheel. So we'll look into that once we get things apart. I figured it's probably quite smart to start with the biggest job, get that out of the way, and then we can deal with the little nitty gritty stuff afterwards. I'm gonna talk you through the plan of action on this thing, uh, and then we're gonna get started. Right, I'm just gonna open up the bonnet so I can talk you through today's plan of action. Right, so the aim by the end of this video is I want the gearbox to be out. I've done clutches on various other cars in the past. The process for most of them is essentially the same. Cars are always going to vary in where things are placed, so the airbox might be in a separate place, the battery might be in a slightly different place, but, but relatively speaking the process of getting the gearbox out of a car is essentially the same. So on this thing I'm quite lucky that the engine is so small, there's lots of space in here to work. There's actually not that much to remove from the engine bay in the top here. Obviously the battery sits right here so that's got to go. The airbox I'll remove as well. Uh, the battery tray underneath the battery needs to come out and that'll give me access to the top of the engine which is where the starter motor is, the gear linkages and obviously the top um, gearbox bolts as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start stripping some of this stuff out. Um, I'm going to try and keep everything as organised as possible because I like to know where my bolts are, where everything goes. I'll take a few pictures as well just to remind myself. Let's get started on this thing. What we'll just do quickly before I begin, before I start taking things apart, I'm just going to give you one last listen at the noise, uh, just in case you didn't watch the last video. I'll give you an indication as to why we're doing this job, so I'll just turn the engine on. Hopefully you can hear that. You can hear it better when I put the clutch down because the noise goes away. As soon as I put my foot on the clutch pedal, so clutch down, you can hear the noise is pretty much completely gone. Then if I bring it back up, There's a pretty, pretty nasty grinder noise. There's actually a few people that said that they've had the same issue on different cars, but with the same gearbox. Um, and theirs ended up being the bearings inside the gearbox as well. So I'm pretty certain it is that. I'm excited to get it fixed as well. All right, first things first, I'm gonna start with the battery. Kind of got this weird uh, fuse box thing on it, so you need to remove that as well. It all comes off as one big piece. A couple of clips. All right, this battery should come out now, hopefully. Yep. Little cover as well. Let's sit that down there. All right, so I managed to separate. This little weird cage thing that comes out. This wiring harness here usually sits on top of it, so I've removed that. I can just tuck that out of the way, like so. And then I've just got to take the battery box out at the bottom now. All right, air box is next. Just gonna undo this clip. Tray looks like it's held on by one, two, three, 13 mils. Bit of WD on these rusty ones. Recent purchase, I used it a few times. Little works, half inch impact. It's got quite a lot of grunt for how small it is. Alright, that's the battery tray. 
held in by this little hose on the bottom, I think. Yeah, a little breather hose just under here. Patch tray. I like to try and keep all my bolts <coughs> and fasteners in whatever they come out of, so I keep all the battery bolts in there. I like to try and stay as organized as possible, especially on a job where you're taking out quite as many bolts as you are on this. It makes your life so much easier when it comes to putting them back together, knowing where all the bolts go, having everything labeled up and, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so as you can see, taking just that air box out and the battery and battery tray, you can see a lot more on top of this engine. So the gearbox is obviously this thing right here. These are the linkages, so this is what changes your gears from inside the car, you can see they go all the way down into the car there. So we need to remove these off the gearbox. The starter motor is right here, as you can see, so you need to take that off. And then access to the uh, gearbox bolts is actually pretty good from up here. I can see one straight through that hole, and there's one, this is a gearbox bolt, the, that one there. All you need to take off uh, to get access to the gearbox bolts, which is kind of crazy really, when you think about it. To remove the gear linkages, I'm going to take off the bolts that mount it to the gearbox. So there's three of them. There's one there, one there, and then one right there. Um, I'm going to remove them and then I just have to remove it from where it meets the gear changer in the gearbox, just off here and off here. Take them off and that'll be the gear linkage separated and I'll just push that up the back somewhere. Just drop the bolt sitting on the steering rack. Ooh. All right, this gear linkages can come off now. There's one. Just using a little like pry tool just to get them off. There's one. This one just lifts off like so. And that is the gear linkages disconnected. I can get that out of the way. So I'm just going to pull this up and uh, just literally hide it away. Around the back of the engine there, anywhere around there. Perfect, out of the way, that's what we want. Right, moving on to the starter motor now. This is the starter motor right here on top of the engine. So in a really good place actually, I'm used to on Vauxhalls, the starter motor is usually right around the back of the engine sitting on the back where you can't see it, can't feel it, and it's a real pain to get it off. You have to go under the car and reach up and all that sort of stuff. Whereas this one, located right at the top, right at the front, this is one of the bolts that holds it on. Um, and it also holds on an earth cable and it also serves as a gearbox mount bolt as well. And the other one is just underneath it. You can't see it, but you can feel it. It's just underneath there. Um, I think they're both 13s, so I'm just gonna whip them off as well. Um, that's the top one out. It was a 13 on the front, and then this wire went on the earth, and then it was an 18, uh, the actual bolt. So the other 13 is really hard to see, but it's underneath them. the motor. I'm going to use my electric ratchet for that one because access is not great. All right, there's the nut. That was a 13 mil as well, and that holds on this bracket of wires. There's like a little um, bracket here that's got a bunch of sensors on it. I don't know if you can see that, can you? This one right here, a bunch of sensors. A 13 mil goes through that or over that. So you can pull that away and the starter motor should be free now, technically, hopefully. Well, the starter motor's out, as you can see. It's wibbly wobbly now. But I can't take it all the way out because those bolts are hitting on this. I might take this arm off so I can get that off. It's only one bolt. Ta-da! Right, so I should be able to take this start motor fully out now. Then you look. Big old bolts there. There we go. And this I'll just cable tie up there or something out of the way. Like so. Right, I'm hoping you can see down in here. Um, I've unplugged what I assume is the reverse switch. Just one plug, little sensor on the front of the gearbox. I'm now going for the uh, slave cylinder. This black bit on top of the gearbox is held into the gearbox by two 13 mils, one there. What that essentially is is like a little plunger with a hydraulic line going to it, which is this. 
Uh, so when you press your clutch, it sends fluid round, pushes the slave cylinder in, which make, makes a fork move and engages your clutch and disengages it when you take it off. So that needs to come off as well. So on, on a nice flexible hose as well, the rubber piece here. So I can just cable tie that out of the way as well. All right, so, so far so good. I believe I'm at the stage where I've taken everything out of the top that I need to. Um, everything is cable tied away. I've cable tied the slave cylinder there, cable tied all the electrics and wiring all along here, just so it's all clear of the gearbox and it's not gonna snag when I drop this thing down. Um, there's one gearbox bolt just in there to get. Uh, and I think that's all the gearbox bolts there is up here. I think the rest are like underneath. I'm gonna crack loose that top bolt and then we'll get the car jacked up in the air. I'll take the wheels off and then we'll get the axles removed. Uh, and I think you have to remove the exhaust or part of the exhaust and the under tray as well. So we're pretty much done up here. So let's move to the bottom. We were nearly finished for the day then. I wanted to crack the wheels off whilst it was still on the floor with a breaker bar quickly. Realized it's got locking wheel nuts. Couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't in the car. It wasn't in the little package that they gave me when I bought it. Couldn't find it anywhere, but it was in the boot. Of all places, I didn't even think to look in there. Luckily, I just ripped everything out. It is in here and in there. There she is. I'm assuming it's actually the right one. Let me just check. Yay, good stuff. Look at these brakes, they're nasty. They'll be getting changed. Right, so car's jacked up, both the wheels are off. If I have to give you one tip today, when you're jacking a car up, be as safe as possible. If this thing lands on you, it's pretty much the end of you. There's, there's no coming back from that. So some may call this overkill. Now let me just show you the way that I set one of these things up. It might be because I overthink things, but I always think it's better to be safe than sorry. So if I go into the car, you can see an array of jack stands. I've got the two red ones are the ones that are actually holding the car. They're on the um, subframe. I've got a yellow one over that side, which is on the uh, sill. I've got the jack on this side, which is also on the sill. I've then put both the wheels underneath. So there's one there and one back there. And they are all sort of supporting the car. And they are also backups, just in case one of them failed. You just never know with these things. Anything can happen. And I think it's better to be safe than sorry. So stick as much stuff under the car as you possibly can. Um, as long as it doesn't get in your way, obviously, of where you're working. Right, I'm going to talk you through my plan of action uh, of what I need to do under here. This under tray needs to come off, this plastic tray. It's just held on by these little Torx bolts. There's a few there, and then it just should just slide out. That'll give me access to the front of the gearbox, because if there's any bolts there, I will need to do that. I think the, the exhaust needs to be unbolted from the gearbox right there. You can see there's a bolt going into it just there, which is an exhaust hanger. We've got a gearbox mount on the rear, which is there. And then if we come into the wheel well, right, so in the wheel well, the axle needs to be removed, which is this piece in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. There's some bolts that go around it, just there. Um, so we need to remove them. We need to remove the main nut on here and then tie rod end, which is that guy there. And then there's three bolts on the bottom just here. I'm going to remove them as well so that we can remove, so that we can separate this bottom ball joint. That'll allow me then to pull all the brakes this way so that I can take the drive shaft out. Um, it's pretty much the same story on the other side. The other one's a lot longer, um, but the process is pretty much the same. So I'm going to get cracking with that. I'm going to start with the under tray. Right, so with that under tray off, I've now got better access to, well, everything really, especially these front gearbox bolts just here. But I have found another issue, something else we're gonna have to sort whilst we're doing all this work. Don't know if you can see all that oil around there, but we've got a leaky sump gasket. Uh, there you go. See it's leaking around there and it's dripping off that bolt just there, which is no good. That's potentially gonna fail an MOT like that because I've had a car fail before 
on uh, oil dripping from a sump, so that's gonna have to get sorted, which is not too much of a problem. As I explained, I've got a few bits to take off in the wheel well. That includes the tie rod end and three bolts underneath for the bottom ball joint, just under here. And then I can remove the bolts that actually join the drive shaft to the... Uh, I think we're missing a bolt, is that a bolt? No. Right, so we've come across our first hurdle. There's always gonna happen with a project like this when you're just delving in. Uh, you're gonna come across a few issues. So I was gonna go ahead and remove the drive shaft nut, uh, the one that connects it to the hub. But it turns out I don't have a big enough socket. So that's the nut right there. And it's a 12 point, but it's a 36 millimeter, I believe. The biggest I've got is a 34 mil, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. So I've had to order one on Amazon. It's gonna to come tomorrow, which is not a big deal because I haven't got much more time today anyway. So I'm gonna do everything else except be able to take these off today. You can see, not big enough, it's a shame. But like I said, I've ordered a 36, and then we can whip them out tomorrow. These bottom ball joint bolts are 13 mils. Well, driver's side didn't want to play ball. <laughs> Two of the three bolts are broken. It's not really a problem because I can still get the uh, ball joint off. Just means I have to order another one of these, which I'm sure you can pick these up pretty cheap. All right, tie rod end, 18 mil. Let's see if the gun will do this. Damn, look at that smoking. Whew, that got hot. Did it though, took it off. I lost a few threads, but quite happy with that. So this has got a lot of power for how small it is. You can see, if you just look at the size of my hand, it's a tiny little piece of kit, but it's really good. Let's see if we can get two out of two. Boom. Well done gun, you did good. I usually bring out the green machine for this next bit. Just give it a few whacks. Tell you what, tie rod ends don't always come out that easy for me. I'm usually wrestling with those things, but luckily on Skoda, they're actually quite easy to come out. Right, for this next bit, I actually picked up a new tool. This is just a cheap US Pro bit set because when you work on cars like this, all the sort of vag stuff, you always end up needing these like multi-square things. Um, I think they're like, are they 12 point? Yeah, yeah, these little sort of 12 point strange looking things, there's always them on these cars and I believe that the drive shaft on the inner bit where it's connected to the gearbox is one of these. I can't remember what size but I'm going to check uh, but you'll definitely need one of these. It comes with long ones and then short ones all the same version just the long and short versions of each other um, and you get a little bit adapter as well for a 3 8 and then for a half inch as well so you can use it on different ratchets. Pretty handy little pieces of kit. You get Torx and then uh, Allen keys as well so I think it's like 15 quid definitely worth getting. Great little pieces of kit these. We have got a pretty angry cloud heading our way. I'm hoping that I can get done before that comes over. All my tools are out. <laughs> this is what happens, right? When I end up working out, I use this wall. My next door neighbor's wall is like a, a tool shelf. So this is what we've got. <laughs> Quite a few tools there. I don't want them getting wet. I just had to really quickly stick all my tools in this little bag in the boot. I've had a quick clear up, as you can see because that does not look happy and it's heading right my way. I don't want everything getting wet. That's such a shame, I was going on so well. I managed to get one of the bolts out of the drive shaft. That's what it looks like, quite long. They ended up being a an M8 of that style. That's what they look like. And I think there's like six of them holding each drive shaft in on each side. Uh, you can get to these ones quite easily from in here. 
the drive shaft is like right here at the end of it whereas the other one you have to go underneath the car to get to it it's got so dark so quickly you probably can't see it on camera but right well we got rained off last night and um, those clouds that are coming over did turn out to be rain and i had to uh, close up shop and go back in but i'm back today and i've got oh turn it around a 36 millimeter 12 point socket now i'm not entirely sure if i actually need to take the hub nut off on the drive shafts on these i may get away with just pulling the whole thing away um, and then the drive shaft will come out of the gearbox I th i'm hoping that's going to be the case if i need to i've got it now though um, it's always good to have all the tools you're going to need i'll probably end up using this in the future for something so i might as well get it good old amazon delivery i ordered this at 8 p.m last night and it arrived at 11 a.m this morning you can't get service like that anywhere else fantastic right i'm carrying on with these drive shaft bolts i'll quickly show you the setup i don't know if you can see that but that's the m8 tool going into one of the bolts right there i'll try and zoom in for you and then i've got a half inch extension going out joined to another half inch extension which comes out to the impact right here so this is kind of what it looks like I figured that uh, just buzzing them out with a gun is probably going to be a lot easier than trying to do it by hand. And then I'm just turning the brake after I knock one loose and take it out. Turn the brake, which turns the drive shaft, get to the next one, buzz, buzz, buzz. So that's my plan. There's five left, I think, in this one, and then I've got to do the other side. Right, I just want to give you a quick top tip for these sorts of bolts. As you know, these are the little M spline weird looking things. This applies to these Torx bolts and Allen bolts. Anything that you have to insert a tool into like that. If you don't get the tool far enough in there, there's a really good chance that you could strip these out. So what I like to do is I've got the tool in situ. It's sitting just inside the, uh, the bolt there. And then you can use a hammer, but I'm just gonna use my ratchet. And just give it a few taps, just to seat that tool directly all the way into the bolt. So you've got a less chance of stripping it out. These aren't very tight anyway, but it's better to be safe than sorry. There we go. All right, so all six bolts out of the passenger side. They come with these little bracket things on them as well, keeping all them safe together. Luckily, um, as I took out the last one, it allowed me, because I've removed the tie rod end and the bottom ball joint, I can pull all this forward like so. And that gives me enough room. Hopefully you'll be able to see it from up here actually where the drive shaft actually comes away from uh, the inner gearbox bit. There you go. Which means I don't actually need my new socket that I bought. That was uh, a bit of an impulse buy. You don't need to take this nut off. You've got plenty of room for wiggle on this side. Time for the driver's side one. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you my setup on the driver's side as well, just in case it uh, help you in any way. Access is a little bit harder. The drive shaft on this uh, driver's side is a lot longer. So it comes from here all the way to about halfway down the engine, so about here, whereas the other one was only short. So that means you're obviously gonna have to reach further, which means I've added another half inch extension to this, so this is probably about three foot long now. Luckily I've got all these extensions laying around because I am buy tools like an idiot. I've stuck a torch down there, don't know if you can see that. So I've lit up the area, which means from the driver's side wheel well, I can see through there, all the way through, you can see the bolts right in the middle of the screen right now you see them so i'm just reaching my extension between the abs line <laughs> i'm just fishing it down fishing it in looking 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 and then just breaking them all loose from here and just winding them out with the gun once the bolt has been screwed all the way out into the engine bay up here and i give the engine a bit of a reach around and you can just about reach the if you've got long arms like me you can just about reach the drive shaft and there's one of the bolts All right, there's the other six bolts. So I've got the left-hand side, right-hand side, and now both drive shafts are now free. So I can wiggle this one as well, like I could the other. And the, that drive shaft now comes away from the gearbox. So that is them done. All right, so next up, um, the exhaust comes down here and it actually mounts to the bottom of the gearbox, just there. There's a 13 mil on the front which takes the mount off. And then there's actually a gearbox bolt behind that that goes all the way through. So we we'll have to take that off as well. Oh, 
that's tight. Right, so with that out, I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the remaining gearbox bolts that are under here. There's one right there, there's one right there, and then I think there's one around the back somewhere, but I don't know how well I'll be able to show you that one. And then we've got the gearbox mount, which is that bolt there, and that bolt there. And I think that's almost it from under here. I'm not having much luck today, or yesterday, with the weather. I don't know, you probably can't even see it on camera, but it's just now decided to tip it down. All over my camera as well. Oh. On the plus side, it gave uh, the engine bay a bit of a clean down. Definitely needed that. I'm now working on the gearbox bolt around here. So this is the top of the gearbox, obviously. And if you reach your hand around, again, just above where the drive shaft bolts, there is another bolt. Very awkward to get to. I managed to just get in there with a ratchet and I'm now undoing it with my fingers. All right, that's that top rear gearbox mount bolt. Um, it goes in that way. This tool, this little ratchet is fantastic. It looks like a little quarter inch ratchet. It's a tiny little thing, but as you can see, it can take three eighths size socket. So that's an 18 mil, which is what that size of the bolt is. And uh, it's so small, it's able to get in this little area because you ain't got much swing room in there. But it's a little Armstrong it's called, I think that's the brand. So you can search that on uh, eBay. And it's a little quarter inch with a 3 8 drive on the uh, actual ratchet. Fantastic little tool that is. Just taken out the last gearbox bolt, which is this one just at the top behind our machine. This is the thermostat here, it looks like thermostat. All right, it's getting exciting now. I've just removed that last top bolt, which was just in there. And if you can see this, it's exciting. We've got some separating of the gearbox. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to show you this. Here, where my finger is, can you see that little gap? I can feel the gasket as well um, between the engine and the gearbox. You can probably hear it, I'm flinging it now. So that to me confirms that we have removed all gearbox bolts because if there was still one in there, it would not be able to separate. So I believe the only thing holding us in now is this guy right here, which is the uh, gearbox mount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna support the engine. Um, some people will put a jack underneath the engine and support it from the bottom. I'm not gonna do that. I've got a special bar, which I'm gonna put across the engine, which will hold the engine, but it'll also assist me in lowering the gearbox. I've used it before on different videos. You've probably seen me use it on the Mini and also on the Astro, I think. I'm gonna take the gearbox out of them. Um, it's a really good way of assisting you from lifting the heavy gearbox on your own especially when you're on the floor like this. Um, and you can put a chain down onto the engine and there's a little loop on the engine here, which I'm gonna hook onto. That'll just hold the engine in place so the engine doesn't flop down. And I'm also gonna put a chain down onto the gearbox. There's a little hook right there where my finger is. Um, and that will attach and it will just be like a little safety mechanism so that when I wiggle the gearbox off, it doesn't just drop to the floor and fall on my face or something. I'm gonna sit across the engine bay. Ooh. Okay, so this is the setup. I've got the bar across the engine bay. As you can see, it's mounted on the on the wings just there. We've then got two hooks, one for the engine, one for the gearbox. The one on the engine is hooked directly through the um, lifting mount on the actual engine, so I can maneuver that up and down using this. On the gearbox side, um, I've got a chain hooked onto the top, goes down, and then it's bolted just there uh, to the little loop on the gearbox. So there's a little bit of slack in that, so when it drops, I've got all that maneuverability to drop it down, uh, which is very handy because that means I can pretty much lower it down to the floor and not have to carry all the weight on my shoulders and fear of it dropping as well. So gearbox mount on the bottom has got to come off. I wanted to get all this set up before I did the gearbox mount on the bottom, just in case anything decided to fall. It's all now being held by this bar, so I'm, I'm confident about going under it now. Bottom gearbox mount and then top gearbox mount and then wiggle it off and down she comes. You can see under here now how much of a gap we've got between the gearbox, so luckily the gearbox is probably going to come off quite easily. 
That's that rear mount taken off. We've just got to do this top one now, just these two bolts. Hopefully this chain's going to catch it if it falls. I'm just lowering down the engine a tiny bit because you want more of an angle. You want it to, the engine to be pointing down a bit. Otherwise the gearbox fouls on this side of the engine. So I'm just going to keep lowering it until I'm happy. This bracket here seems to be causing me a few issues. Right there. I wonder if I could quickly take that off. Ah, oh, rain just happened again. It keeps coming out of nowhere. It's like blue skies. One minute. And the next minute it's absolutely pouring it down my face. It's soaked. Right, I've been trying to get this gearbox out for a little while now, but the gearbox mount on this side, this one right here, is fouling on like the chassis of the car, and I just can't get it to go any lower. It's quite a tall mount, so um, I've managed to get the bolts out from going underneath on this side, and then through the wheel well on this side, just pulled that back, managed to get to both of the bolts. So this should now be free with any luck. There we go. That's what it looks like. You can imagine, look how tall that is. You're trying to get all that clearance and it's just not happening. So that can come off and that should now give me all the clearance I need on this side and allow me to now drop this box down. Let's give it another go. Come on, you bugger. Well, that was not one of the most dignified gearbox removals I've ever done. That was way tougher than it should have been. Way tougher. I don't know what it was getting caught up on, but I was trying to wiggle it off and I was lowering the engine down, trying to pull the gearbox off and it was stuck on something, but it's on the floor. That's the main thing. I've just had enough thread on this thing. <laughs> you can see it's right down the bottom, but that chain was great. I was able to lower it down really slowly by that. And it was just nice having this as like a backup those gearboxes are heavy and if they fall, they're either gonna break something or they're gonna break you. Um, and so, I'm just gonna wind this engine back up just to take some tension off that engine mount. Um, yeah, they're, they're very heavy and trying to wiggle it out and hold the weight at the same time, really not easy. So this piece of kit is fantastic for that reason, to take some of that slack and um, just be a bit of a safety net really, because if it does fall, this is gonna catch it, which is perfect. But as you can see, oh, let's get down on the floor. Nice and wet. Gearbox is out. Should we see if this bearing's bad? That bearing sounds quite good to me, which is, uh, right, I'm gonna pull this out, out from under the car. It should have enough clearance by the looks of it. And uh, we'll have a closer look at it. Come on, you. Out you come. Look at that clearance, look. Millimeters. Come on doggy, go for a walk, come on. Just in case you're curious to what it looks like, there's the clutch as well. Flywheel to me, from here it looks like a single mass flywheel. To me it doesn't look like a dual mass. Could be wrong until I take it off, I don't really know but clutch looks in pretty good condition. I believe this was quite new, maybe a couple of years ago, so I don't think that is a problem. I will take it all off and check it all just to make sure but I don't think that's going to be our issue. So this here is the clutch release bearing. This is what sits on the fork inside the gearbox uh, and that pushes on the pressure plate. Uh, some people said that this could have been the noise and I, before I delved into this, that is what I thought as well but if I spin that, you can probably hear no noise in that whatsoever. That's my gloves probably making the noise. That's smooth as butter that is and I believe I'm pretty sure if I check the receipts, this is only two years old. I think this was done in 2018, along with obviously the clutch and the, the uh, pressure plate. So, unfortunately, this is not our issue. I am going to take the clutch off uh, just to check the flywheel and check all that stuff and make sure everything else is okay before I start taking the gearbox apart. But it looks to me like we're going to be delving into the gearbox and taking that thing apart and replacing some bearings inside that thing instead. Which is going to be interesting because I've never done it before. So it's going to be a learning curve for me, 
but so far so good I'm taking this thing apart if I just give you a quick listen to the gearbox it's really hard to try and uh, replicate the noise whilst this is out of the car without taking it apart because you think how quick that engine spins over when it's running you know turning the whole time it's really hard to do that by hand but we have got a bit of noise the bearings that I think are gone are situated in the gearbox around this area here so if I spin uh, the shaft this side you should be able to hear some grinding Now hold the gearbox still. There we go. Right, so with the gearbox out, there's one last thing I want to do before we finish up this video. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the clutch out of the car. I um, just want to inspect that. I'm like 99 to 100% sure that the gearbox is our issue. But I just want to take the clutch out, just have a quick look at it, just to make sure that everything there is okay. I found a receipt in the, uh, the book that came with this car. that The clutch was done in November of 2018, so barely two years ago the clutch was done in this car. So This here is the paperwork that I found, Mr. Clutch in Norwich um, and it says it was done on the 15th of the 11th 2018 and it cost 300 pounds which I don't think is too bad actually for a, for a clutch to be supplied and fitted 300 quid that's not actually too bad that would explain if this comes out in good condition and hardly used that explain why I'm gonna quickly pull it out and have a look at it but I don't expect to find anything this thing is held in by a bunch of 9mm 12 point sockets around the edge so Well, as suspected, this thing looks fairly clean, fairly new. There's nothing untoward in here whatsoever. All these little arms are solid. There's nothing rattling around there that would cause the noise. This all looks good. Still lots of pad left on this uh, disc as well. So that's definitely evident of it being changed recently. I am going to put a new one in it anyway because I've got one. But it's good to know that that's not a problem. Some people point out that it might have been the mass flywheel that was causing an issue if it's a jewel because I know that they can go bad but this looks like a single so that's not a problem either right so with that I would say that's probably a good place to stop this video my plan of action from here on out is obviously to um, take apart the gearbox because that is what's causing the issue um, put the new bearings in that I need to I've not decided yet if I'm gonna go like full rebuild on the gearbox you can get a kit uh, that has comes with every bearing inside the gearbox and you can refresh the whole thing some people would say that's worth doing that whilst the gearbox is out. I might just replace the bearings that I know are bad. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet, so we'll see what happens when we get to that. But that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, taking out the gearbox on the old Skoda. Um, it was good fun. I had, had a good fun doing it. I learned a lot. It's really easy to work on this car. It's quite a nice change to some of the more fiddly stuff I've done in the past. In the next instalment, you'll see me taking apart the gearbox, uh, tearing it all down and replacing what bearings we need to. I've never really taken a gearbox apart before, so it's going to be interesting to learn some new stuff. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps out my channel a lot. If you want to help support the channel, um, I've got merchandise and stuff. You can see it all down below the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.